We're back again with another stream, two minute stream about animation, storyboarding, and film analysis. Tonight we're going to be covering how to be economical with your shots. Uh, it's an important skill to have in animation, but this is something that I don't hear about very often in animation and something that people don't talk about outside of animation very much either. And it is something that is important to know and will help elevate your work over other people's work. When I'm talking about shots, just as a point of clarification, I'm talking about every time we cut to a new setup or a new layout. This is just to keep things clear when I'm going through it. So what does it mean to be economical with your shots? It means to have a limited number of cuts, to have a limited number of different types of shots, and it means to have a limited number of camera moves. So if this, is, if this doesn't make sense right now, we'll go through some films that I've pulled out and I'll show it to you and we'll You'll immediately know what I'm talking about when I show you the examples and when we go shot by shot by shot. So why does this matter? A film is like a visual song. Every cut acts as a note. Too many cuts and sounds like noise. You can also create rhythm to your scenes by reusing previous shots. Just like a song, if you just have a new note every couple beats, it doesn't sound like anything. It just sounds like noise. You need to create a pattern. You need to create a rhythm, a tempo. And all these things apply to filmmaking as well, where when you cut to something, it indicates something to the audience. When you cut away, it is a new note. And then when you cut back, it's that same note. So you're building a, a song, a visual song for the audience to follow. And once you establish patterns and rhythms, it's easier for you to cut back to them. It's easier to have shorter shots. It allows you to set up expectations and then surprise people. If you always have like a medium shot when cutting to this person and then all of a sudden you cut close, it creates an emotional impact on the audience that you're cutting close. So it's something to keep in mind when you are building your scenes. How do these shots work together and how do they work as a whole? And then how do they work in sequence? Our eyes can also get visually tired from too many cuts. If you keep cutting, 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 it creates a very choppy look and your eyes have to like readjust every couple of seconds to understand what's happening. And that is not good. You don't want people's eyes to get strained while watching your movie. It should feel like you are just watching something naturally and each cut flows directly into the next without having to strain your eyeball. If you don't have enough cuts, it can also get boring. There are movies that use one long take for the whole movie. So it's one hour of the camera flying around the scene and that can get boring. I think having to follow where the camera's moving the whole time can distract people. It can take away from the impact from certain scenes. It's the usage of both long and short cuts that make it exciting. The second point of why it matters is that less is more. The less you cut, the more important each shot becomes. So if you only cut a couple times in a scene, every time you cut, your eye will immediately pick that out and will realize like, oh no, this is important. Like I need to pay attention here. If you cut more often, it's just like blinking. You don't really notice it. You're just like, oh, they're just cutting all over. Like it's, why do I care about this one shot compared to the other? There's no impact at all. And it's kind of like cooking. Like you make things that are too sweet. It doesn't taste good. You're just like, oh, it's too sweet. Candy is a lot like that, where it's just sugar, 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 sugar. And when you eat it, maybe the first second is really tasty. But then after that, it's just overwhelming. You want to have that balance of like salty, sweet, acidic, you know, savory. It's the relativeness of the flavors that make it delicious. So you have to create this, this flavor palette of all these different things together to really pull the audience in into the scene. And lastly, animation requires for every shot to be completely created. Someone has to draw it. Someone has to animate the people moving. So every time you cut to a new shot or a new layout, that means you have to draw a new drawing. You have to draw a new background. You have to draw new props. And that takes time. So a background artist in TV animation is required to do two BGs a day. That's 10 BGs in a week. If you cut to a different background every time in say like a minute, that might be like 50 BGs. So that's already 10 weeks. That's two and a half months. That's insane. That's, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of money to be going to just cutting new, 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 new. So you want to be economical so that you save money, so that it helps create rhythm, and so that you're using your cuts more effectively. Animation, especially TV animation, has a lot of constraints, which isn't a bad thing. I think 
constraints will actually make you a better artist and will will bring out more creative solutions to how to fix things or how to make things better. And so understanding how to be economical with your shots and limiting yourself will allow you to do this. So that being said, let's watch the first clip. It is from Transformers, directed by Michael Bay. This is the scene where Sam Witwicky meets Bumblebee for the first time. We'll watch through the scene and then I'll break it down. This scene is pretty egregious in its shot usage. It is really all over the place and hey! what? It's a cousin of that damn cousin. That was Transformers. Let's go through it. Here are all the shots from, from the scene. Within the first three seconds, we have one, two shot. We have two shots here. Bernie Mac says, hey, the mechanic off screen says what? And between that, we cut again. Bernie Mac has a lot more dialogue here, but it's only five seconds and we cut away to the clown for another second. So in about 10 seconds, we had four different shots. That is insane. Like that is way too much cutting for someone saying, hey, someone responding, what? And then someone saying, cut it with that clown suit guy. He's going to get heat strokes, yada, yada, yada. And then the clown saying, I'm hot. The makeup melts and hurts my eyes. In 10 seconds, we had four different shots. We don't need that many shots and there's nothing that was gained between the shots. I don't quite understand why they chose this layout. This thing takes up such a huge part of the frame and Bernie Mac is so tiny. Why are we so far away from him? And why are we starting the shot on this? Like, where's the wide shot of the car dealership? Or where is something to help establish where we are? This is a very abstract type of shot, and I'm not sure how they chose this to start with, right? So Bernie Mac barely comes out. He's only on screen for one and a half seconds, by the way. Don't forget that. So you have one and a half seconds to pick out this guy over here in all of this. Like if this if this shot was on screen for a lot longer than a second and a half, maybe that would be okay because he might be the only one moving. We might not have the camera move. It might be locked off so it's static and we can see the movement. Our eyes are really good at picking up movement and picking up areas of high contrast. This is not high contrast. I would say the highest contrast in this might be somewhere around here, maybe here, maybe like up here, but definitely not down there. He's also not moving in a way that our eyes can pick up very easily because he's walking straight towards the camera. So the scale difference of him moving is pretty much the same at that distance. Like we're not going to pick him out of the crowd. We're not going to pick him out of this dark shape over here. So these are all things you have to consider when you're deciding shot length and cutting between shots as well. How easy is it for the audience to pick up? What, are, what is the audience going to look at first? These things are important, especially if your shots are one and a half seconds long. And then all of a sudden we cut to Bernie Mac here, yelling at something off screen for a second and a half. And then we cut to another shot of him here, yelling off screen for five seconds now. What did this shot give us that this one couldn't? Like, why do we have that one? Couldn't we just have had all this dialogue down here in this shot? I don't know. I have all these questions about this scene and I don't have any answers. This doesn't make sense. It's it's too fatty. We need to cut it down. We need to cut down the amount of shots we have just so it simplifies it for the audience, especially in animation. You want to do it for financial and scheduling reasons. I don't understand why we cut here. And then we cut to the clown. Why do we need to see the clown? We, we saw him maybe in, he doesn't pop up again later on. Like this is like a weird choice to be spending time here. Anyways, so that's the first four shots. <laughs> 10 seconds spent between four shots, which is really short. Half of it was spent right here. And then we get to the establishing shot of the car dealership at this point. After 10 seconds, after our eyes have been like blitzed, pans down, it cranes down to this, they're walking forward. And then we cut to this weird creeper shot of Bernie Mac over here. And I don't understand what his purpose is in being right here. I don't understand the purpose between these two shots. And then we cut, so two shot of them, which is fine. I think we need to establish that. And then we cut to Bernie Mac's reaction in the middle of their dialogue. And I'm, I'm so confused. I'm like, why does he keep popping up in these weird scenes? I don't think it's necessary for him to be there at that time. Like he's, he's kind of like just creeping on them and it sets the wrong mood or wrong tone for the scene. Like it should be comedic. Um, Aesthetic Derelict says it almost makes him look like a threat. Yeah, it does. Like having this like foreboding shape over here is very creepy. Again, this, this shot is only on camera for like less than a second. And it's in between Sam Witwicky's joke, which is even weirder. They like put it in between a joke. When you cut things between a joke, it kind of breaks up the joke. It breaks up the flow of things. And if you're cutting away to something, it should be for a good reason. In this scene, I don't know why they did that. I have no idea. And it, it confuses me. 
And that's why I'm talking about like shot economy. If the shot isn't necessary, just take it out. If it doesn't add to the story, take it out. This is what I did. Like I tried to simplify it. So we pan down and just add Bernie Mac in this scene right here. If we need to see him at the start of the scene, just have him in the shot and not be a creeper like over here. Take out creeper shot here. This is fine. And then just take out the creeper Bernie Mac shot in the middle and just have him finish up his joke here. Also, we should probably widen out for the shot where he's like, you know that car? This is 40 year old version. And then this is 50 year old version. We don't even see the cars that he's pointing at. So the joke kind of lost on the audience because we don't get to see the shitty car and then the shittier car. To really sell gags and to really hit home stuff, it's always best to do it with both verbal and physical. So if they're gonna make a verbal joke at the car, we should also be able to see it physically. Why not do both? It just hits home harder. That's how I will have simplified that scene. Okay, then we get to that weird shot at the start again. Like, why did we, why do we have this weird shot of this? We never saw the Witwickies walking into the shot or we never saw it from this angle per se. Like this is such an abstract shot again that I don't understand why we use it. The camera pushes in onto Bernie Mac and it ends on a close up of him here. And then we cut to, their two shot on a close up and then we cut back to a close up and then back to a close up and we never get a shot of all three of them in the same scene which is also weird this is the first time they're meeting and we don't have a wide shot where we see all the reaction we have this back shot here but we never see their reaction in the same shot as bernie mac and that feels very unusual and uncomfortable especially if you're supposed to be creating like a rapport with the other person you want to have them interacting in the same scene you want to see them act off of each other. It feels weird when you separate them because if you cut between two shots of like close-ups, it creates a separation, especially if you don't have that earlier shot that connects them to each other. Like I said, why do we need to go to a close-up of each side? Can't we shoot this in a medium wide, wide setup to get all the reactions at the same time? If we had this shot at some point in the conversation, preferably at the near the start of the conversation, it would have worked perfectly. Okay, maybe cutting back and forth to the close-ups feels weird, but at least we would feel a little bit more at ease seeing this handshake, seeing them like side by side. You know, it's not even that hard. Like they probably have that shot somewhere, but they don't use it. Again, like all these extra shots and extra choices that I just don't understand. And then we get this OTS shot of Sam and him putting his hand on him. And then they start walking away, right? And Bernie says, this is your first enchilada of freedom. And then we cut close and he like awaits under one of those hoods. I'm like, why do we cut close again? In, what he's saying in this shot could have easily been said here, especially since all this acting and stuff doesn't really tell us much. Like it doesn't add to what he's saying. It doesn't add to the scene. I think if they had just kept it in this wide shot, it would have been more effective. Like him promising all these things and look around, you have like this shitty looking car dealership. I think that would have been more appropriate. It would have been like this weird dichotomy where he's like, you can have all your freedom. And then maybe Sam looks around and he's like, oh, is this what freedom looks like? Is this, is this what I want? Is this like the dream, like a rusted car? We could have easily taken out this shot and just done all of the dialogue there of them walking. It would have made the pacing better because we have all these cl close up shots from before of them talking. And then we have a, like a wide long shot, which kind of helps reset our palate, like our visual palate. It's like eating a lot of sugar to kind of get over that feeling of like nauseousness. You eat something savory or salty to reset your tongue palate. And the same way that happens, we can do that visually. If we have a bunch of close-ups, like close up, close up, close up, close up, close up, close up, close up. And then we go to a wide shot that lasts on screen for a long time. It helps to let us reset. We get our bearings again. We feel comfortable. We're like, okay, we take a breath. Whew, we're refreshed. This is all what I'm talking about in terms of shot economy, like learning how to cut between things, learning when to cut, learning what to shoot so that you don't have all these extra shots. And then, sorry, this, this first sequence we're watching really is like all over the place. So if it feels a little bit disjointed in how I'm talking about this, it's because that's the scene. Then we cut to the camera pushing in here. It pushes into this scene and eventually Bumblebee drives up into this spot. The camera with it pushing in kind of indicates that we are walking with Sam and Bernie Mac, right? Like, oh, we're, we're going to go over to this car. We're going somewhere. Cool. That's what the shot is. Nope. 
That was just us pushing in for no reason at all. We cut back and Sam and Bernie Mac have stopped walking. And I'm just like, what? We have them walking in this scene. We have a push in that kind of indicates that they're walking. But then we cut back and they're stationary. They created this rhythm and then just broke it for no reason. And Bernie Mac doesn't even say anything interesting. He says, son, I'm a lot of things. Lying is not one of them. And you're like, what? I, what? <laughs> It just all the kind of like is disjointed. Like his words don't match what he's doing. The action doesn't match the cuts. And it kind of feels that way when you're watching it. You, you're kind of on this weird roller coaster ride where you're not sure if you're going up the hill or down the hill or like around the court. Like it just comes at you from all angles. And this is, this is where it gets really kind of like crazy. Bernie says, I'm a lot of things. Lying is not one of them, especially not in front of my mammy. Then we cut close on the mammy, and it's like, that's my mammy. Then we cut back to Bernie and goes, hey, mammy. And then we cut closer on her again, and she gives him the finger. Why did we need so many cuts to show this joke? Right, like it breaks up so much of the joke. Also, why do we cut close on mammy here? We can see her in this shot. We can barely tell that's her face here anyways. It doesn't matter. We don't get any new information from between these two shots, right? There's no new information from this shot here to this shot. We, we don't know which one's Mammy still. We don't, we saw them in the previous shot. What is this one giving us? I don't know, why do we cut closer? Then we cut to this shot and he yells off screen. And then we cut closer to when the joke is, but we kind of already spoiled the joke because we cut closer here, right? So this is also how being more economical with your shots can kind of help sell things. Here's how I would have done it. Take out the reaction shot of Sam. Just, it doesn't matter. Just go to this shot, this weird stage shot and have him say, son, I'm a lot of things. Lying is not one of them, especially not in front of my mammy. And then he turns around and he points, that's my mammy. And then he waves her, hey mammy. And then he just cut close and she gives him the finger. Really easy, really clear. The joke sells even better because you just get boom, middle finger. There's no confusion as to why we're cutting all over the place. We can get Bernie Mac's acting here. We can see his face, give him, give us like that Bernie Mac comedian stuff. Like that's the stuff we want to see. We want to see people act. And then we get the finger and that's, we cut close on that. So the impact of the cut makes sense. It's just like, boom, middle finger. Don't give away the joke too early by cutting closer.